Hello and welcome to another episode of this series where we're looking at models that I've um, either built from a, a kit or where I've designed the kit myself. This time um, we're looking at this tiny little um, 4mm scale, 9mm uh, gauge uh, model for an Allen Keeve K12 class locomotive and this is actually um, the second in, this, in the set that I've designed. So this is, this is built up from a, a set of production parts for a, a kit I designed. Um, as you can tell, it's um, it's another tiny little loco. Um, the having finished building the Hudson Hunter diesel um, in four millimeter scale, which we looked at in a previous episode, I was looking around for something else um, that I could that I could build a model of. I wanted another another small small loco that I could try and design a kit for, and I'd actually seen um, drawings for the K12 class locomotive in Alan Keith's. Uh, biography it's, uh, called The Tale of Many Railways um, and there's a drawing in there, a scale drawing of this loco in there um, unfortunately it's a drawing for a standard kind of two foot gauge version um, and two foot in four millimeter scale is obviously eight millimeters not the nine millimeter gauge um, that that's usually used for, for narrow gauge modeling um, and I couldn't really get the, I couldn't work out a way of Kind of scaling it up um, to match without kind of losing the the proportions and the look of the model so I kind of left it on one side and didn't really think about it much more um, and then on a later flick through the book I saw a couple of photos of one of the, the locomotives in the class AK6 uh, which was built to the wider um, wider gauge of two foot six inches um, and there were no drawings for this but there, there was a couple of photos and I thought I could work out roughly uh, what had been done uh, to change to change the loco? Um, so the first thing I did in this case was actually make made some drawings of my own. Uh, I'll put them up on the screen in a second so you can see um, to show what that kind of that version uh, looked like, and then went about working out whether I could whether I could make a model. Um, now, unlike with the Hudson Huntsler, I decided I'd go with something a little simpler for the drive. And instead of trying to build the chassis myself, I found that there was um, there was a part I could use kind of off the shelf. Um, and this is the, the the motor bogey that's used. So it's got a motor that runs down the middle uh, and drives the the wheels. Um, the two wheels on either side are actually connected along. There's no axle in the middle. Um, there's gears down both sides so that it, the motor drives uh, a gear chain down both sides that drives drives all four. And that's how it's nice and compact. And this actually comes out of a, an N-gauge um, tram from Cato, um, either a, a Paw tram or a Centram, um, and both basically the same, the same chassis use it, unit. Each tram actually has two of these in it, uh, but you can kind of pull these out and use these. So that's what's that's what's driving uh, driving this. Um, so once I'd got the the chassis and realised that yeah, it would fit, the wheelbase isn't quite right, so I've moved the the axle boxes on the model. Um, to the right place to match the wheels, even though that doesn't quite match the match the drawings. Um, so yeah, so once I decided that that was that was okay, um, I set about doing the design work, and it's a bit difficult to tell um, from the completed model how this fits together. Uh, but if we look at one of the kind of pre-production um, demo parts that I was putting together, you can see that essentially you've got a 3D printed uh, kind of foot plate downwards, um, and then everything above that is etched parts um, and obviously this is a lot more complicated etched wise than the the parts I did for the Hudson Hunts lo locomotive um, that only had um, mostly flat parts I think there was only one that actually had any bends in it and that took me a couple of goes to get right um, I'll throw up a photo on the screen so you can see the kind of weird origami um, that goes on to build this but essentially uh, the cab front and back are joined by the floor and fold, kind of fold up. This whole engine compartment is one piece for the three sides, then another piece for the roof. Um, and then there's a, there's a the, the wall and the roof um, glue on or, or solder on uh, separately. And then there's, there's details for there's a there's a, um, a floor with a ton of checkerboard pattern uh, there's a brake stand um, yeah 
and I designed it so that it was fairly easy to put together. I don't like trying to kind of kind of you know join etched parts at 90 degrees and, and solder or glue. Um, it's a bit of a bit of a nightmare. So that was one of the reasons why this is all um, kind of folded the way it is because it means you can actually just kind of fold it up and super glue it. And again, I'll, I'll kind of try and throw some photos up that show the process of assembly. But if you can kind of, um, it's a bit difficult to see in these parts. But essentially, um, the the front piece slots into the front cab wall, and there are, there are some slots you can just kind of see some tabs, you can see where the remains of them are, that you can fold over tightly and that holds it all together while you then glue or, or solder it together. Uh, and then you can break the tabs off, file them flat, fill them in, uh, and the holes all disappear. So it's actually reasonably straightforward to assemble. And then the whole thing just kind of, um, if I pull this off here, just kind of slots into, into there's got some guides that slot it into the, into the base. Um, and yeah, and you can see that the actual, the, the power unit kind of sits nicely in this in this area here um, and works quite well. Um, I did a this was obviously as I say nine millimeter. I actually did a, a version for six point five millimeter, which kind of represents kind of eighty millimeter gauge. Um, I don't have an example of that to show. I might have a, a photo of a built one I can throw up, but essentially that uses a much bigger, strangely, um, power block that actually fills the cab. Uh, this was one of the again test etches for that. Essentially, it's the same, all the same etched parts, apart from you cut out a piece of the floor on the front wall um, to let that block through. Um, but yeah, that was uh, that was just an interesting kind of diversion. A couple of people asked if I could do a kind of um, a, a six point five millimeter gauge version as well. Um, so that's that's what happened. Um, not much else to say about that really. Um, so yeah, so um, it all worked really, really nicely, as you can see. I mean, the the actual this is a, again a test. It's missing mesh behind some of the panels. Um, also, the um, the etch I did allowed lots of variations. So um, across the class, some of them had the doors on different sides. Some of them had different side panel details. Um, obviously, this doesn't have anything on the front and back, whereas this model of AK six has these extra panels um, kind of almost armor plating added um, on the front and the back um, so the, the the etches allowed you to basically build any of those variations um, although all of them only to obviously two point two foot two foot six inch gauge rather than the slightly narrower uh, two foot gauge um, but that was really good um, painting it's in the right color orange so part way through um kind of doing the the build and researching the class i actually ended up um in conversation with alan keith himself uh the original kind of designer and owner of the company um so we had lots of conversations about about the model and and, and other things um so apparently the orange they used originally on their first locomotives came from a, a hardware store down the road from the works at the time and was labeled howard rotavator orange um, when they couldn't get that anymore, the closest match they could find uh, had the um, was RAL 2004, um, and amazingly, a lot of the orange uh, modelling paints are that same shade. So this was actually, I think, Humbrol uh, acrylic spray paint, um, and is the right the right shade of orange. Um, doing the wasp stripes was a bit more of a a bit more of a challenge. I didn't fancy trying to do these by masking it with with tape. So what I actually did, um, and I'm, I'm quite happy with how this turned out. Although I'm sure I'm not the first person to try it, but I I etched a stencil um, as part of the kit. Um, and what you did was you taped the the panels onto the onto the stencil uh, and sprayed uh, sprayed the different colours. Um, and it was set up because these the front and back parts are ever so slightly different. Um, there are markings on the stencil for where you align the back and the front parts so that you get the the stripes in exactly the right place. Um, again, I'll throw up a. I don't have a spare etch, so I'll throw up a photo of the of the of the panel of the of the stencil in, in use, so you can see how that works. But um, compared with trying to do this with tape, given how tiny these lines are, I think that's come out really really well. Um, and as I say, really nicely represents the the original the original prototype. Um, and as I say, having having talked to Alan about it, we actually went ahead and wrote uh, an article for Narrow Gauge um, Railway Modelling Review um, about the class. So I, I did an article um, 
about this particular model and then Alan and I wrote an article about the all the different locos in the class which obviously included um, AK6 so if you want lots more details about um, not just this model but the class in general I'll leave links to those uh, to the issue that those articles appeared in in the in the description um, and it was quite nice because obviously as I said this this started out as a model um, inspired by one of Alan's books and in a more recent book he wrote which covers the first half century of, of his company and all the locos he made uh, there's actually a photo of this model in, in the book he included a couple of pages at the end about uh, models that people have built of his locos and this this one actually appeared in the book so that was kind of a nice a nice way to come full circle and round and round this off um so yeah uh, i mean as i say complexity wise it's not it's not as complex as the hudson hunslet given that um, i'm not having to build a chassis but the the origami required for this um this etch and drawing it out was, was was really complicated and took i think three attempts the way the side panels kind of slot into the into the body once you've formed it up uh was quite a challenge but i think it's it works really nice as the you know it's difficult to represent metal using anything other than metal really you can't get some of these fine details on a on a 3d print certainly not things like the thinness of the door sides and the roof and things like that um so yeah and and also things like being able to use metal tube for the for the exhaust means you can actually have a hole in the middle and things like that um so yeah so that's the alan keith uh, k12 class locomotive this one as i say is specifically made up as uh, as a model of ak6 um again it's as a, as it's a kit um i designed it's available for others to to buy uh through light railway stores under the narrow planet branding um Currently, there isn't any in stock, but as we, uh, as I film this, there is a batch of parts for ten more kits uh, on the way to me. So hopefully, we'll be back in stock um, sometime soon. Um, as I say, we, we we do we do kits in, in in batches when there's when there's interest. So hopefully, um, even if you're watching this video a long a lot time, long time later, if you if you if there are no kits available, leave a leave an expression of interest through the website, and hopefully there'll be another another batch along soon. So yeah, so that's the that's that's the second kit I designed, and I think quality-wise is a little bit of a step up from the Hudson Hunslet, even if it's not quite as popular due to um, everybody likes a Hudson Hunslet, um, and with only kind of six of these in total, I think um, built in the UK, they're they're not quite as popular a loco, but I I really like them, uh, and I hope you've enjoyed this uh, this kind of trip through the through the model.